In this video, I just wanted to share some tips regarding forging weapons in three houses, as well as how to get rare weapons like Parthia or Hoth Declare. Now, this will not be an in-depth forging guide, but I want to talk about forging training, iron, and steel weapons, since these will no doubt be your most common weapons. In Fire Emblem, you're not going to be always using a quote-unquote stronger weapon. Instead, you want to have a variety to choose from depending on the situation. Forging weapons at the smithy makes them better, and you can even evolve them, so to say, into other types. Forging does cost money and resources, so let's see what you are getting because it may affect what you decide needs forging. First up, we have training weapons. These weapons are the most basic weapons, adding very little extra damage, but they also do not weigh very much. When you forge a training weapon into a training plus version, you get plus 15 durability and minus 2 WT. WT stands for weight, and you should know that the weight of weapons affect attack speed. Attack speed determines if your unit gets a follow-up attack, which is extremely important because if you hit an enemy twice, you may end up doing more total damage than hitting them with a stronger weapon once. This can net you a kill and actually be crucial for surviving onslaughts of enemies. Training weapons may be weak, but if you get to double an enemy, that may actually turn out better than iron and steel weapons, depending on the situation. A special case for forging training plus weapons is that gauntlets end up getting plus 20 durability and plus 10 hit. This is because training gauntlets only have one weight already. Overall, two weight may not seem like much, but I wouldn't underestimate how important it can affect a fight. Training weapons are cheap to buy and the cheapest to upgrade, so definitely give them a go if you want more chances at follow-up attacks. Moving on to iron weapons, they are stronger than training and lighter than steel, so you'll be using them a lot throughout the game. For getting iron plus weapons, you get plus 5 durability, plus 1 might, and plus 10 hit. Basically, they get a bit more consistent and a little extra damage. We have more special cases for bows and gauntlets. Iron bow plus gets plus 5 durability, plus 1 might, plus 10 hit, and minus 1 weight. Iron gauntlets get plus 10 durability and plus 10 hit. I'm not going to be doing any deep analysis on what the best weapons are or value you get from each upgrade, but just be aware that sometimes you may want a different type of weapon rather than just always upgrading what you have and vice versa. Last one we are covering in this video is Steel. Steel plus weapons get plus 5 durability and plus 2 might. If training is better for speed and iron is better for consistency, then steel is all about damage. With combat arts in the game, they benefit from having more powerful weapons since you can't get a follow-up attack, at least for most of them anyway. You may end up chewing through durability, but steel weapons have more durability than iron weapons, so it may be playing into the idea that you use harder hitting steel weapons for finishing off enemies with combat arts. There are again a few special cases. Steel Bow Plus gets plus 5 durability, plus 2 might, and minus 1 weight. Steel Gauntlets Plus get plus 10 durability and plus 5 hit. You'll notice that none of the forged gauntlets actually increase their damage. One tip I have is that forging a weapon brings their durability back to full, so an iron sword with only 2 durability will get its full 45 durability when you upgrade it to iron plus. This actually leads into repairing weapons. Repairing weapons simply restore full durability back to said weapon. Both forging and repairing weapons do not seem to cost more if your weapon is used more. For example, if you use an iron sword plus only one time, it will cost the same to repair it as if you used it 40 times. As a reminder, when a weapon hits zero durability, they are not destroyed like in some Fire Emblem games. Basically, they just get much weaker, so you can still use them, but you must repair them to get the full stats back. Forging and repairing these basic weapons cost smithing stones, and these may seem limited at first, but you can actually just buy them for 100 gold each from the extra merchants if you do the Clearing the Way quest. Seriously, these guys are basically must-haves for any playthrough. Let's move on to how to get rare weapons. This is something that I first learned from a friend and it cleared up a lot of confusion I had about monster drops. So once you start encountering rare monster sightings on the calendar, you can do these missions to go beat up big monster enemies. These are the red exclamation points on the calendar. If you didn't know, these monsters drop rusted weapons and at first you may think, why in the world would I want those? Turns out, if you inspect them, you can see that they have a different description. These rusted weapons can be forged into powerful weapons, and this includes silver weapons, I think maybe brave weapons, and then you have special named weapons. What is hilarious is that these drops are actually random. The first monster I fought dropped Parthia, but after that, I was confused as to why I only saw silver weapons and then sometimes other named weapons rarely. You can actually re-roll what monsters drop simply by exiting the map and re-entering again. This can get you a completely different monster and more importantly, a different weapon. As a disclaimer, to forge things like Parthia or Hot Declare, you need Professor Level A+. So if you aren't messing around in New Game Plus, then this is some late game territory. 
even with Professor Level A+, you still need rare smithing materials, and to be honest, in my first playthrough, I never had enough of these to even make one of these special weapons. I can't say for sure if they are even worth chasing after, but if you want to get them all, then you can just reroll these drops over and over. The game does tell you this, but as a reminder, if you break all the barrier spots on a monster, you will get special materials. I think all of them are used for forging. Considering how these monster drops are random, I have to assume the material drops are also random. That's all I have for now, hopefully you learned something about forging weapons. Getting those plus upgrades don't always translate to more damage, and for me I actually think training plus weapons aren't that bad. Follow-up attacks are always important, so having a lighter weapon may end up saving you. In the later parts of the game you may not need the lighter weapons, but for early to mid game it's a great help. As for re-rolling those rare monster drop weapons, I will add that this can be a way to get cheap silver weapons or cheaper silver weapons. Buying silver weapons from the shop is expensive, but the cost of forging these special rusted weapons into silver weapons costs less if you factor in the cost of smithing stones. That may be something to consider, but it's not a huge amount of savings. Let me know if you have used those special named weapons like Hot Declare, Parthia, or the Dragon Claw Gauntlets. I really don't know if they are that good, so I wouldn't say it's a necessity to try and reroll for them to drop. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys in the next video.